Hey, good evening. It's really amazing to have you guys here. My name is Daniel. I was a professional opera singer and a beatboxer on the side. And tonight we're gonna be reacting to Dimash's Stranger. Dimash has been met with a lot of contention on this channel. And to all of those questions, I say, look at the comments of the old videos because I'm not going to go into them here. I just want to focus on Dimash in this video and just analyze his voice, give honest criticism, be genuine about it. So sit back, relax, and let's just listen to this, what I'm sure is going to be a really great performance from Dimash. Thank you very а теперь прозвучит новая песня, примера. Really like the roughness of that stringed instrument. Love this atmosphere. To know who I am if I have this trait to begin again. Nice pure vowel there. Love this vibe. Somewhere in my yeah. heart in ancient times I wandered Through this valley side I find them on the streets Oh, it's so haunting. I love this. Nice. Interesting choice on that diphthong. That's a really fun vocal technique. Oh, it's so cool. His immense repertoire of genres and vocal styles. Oh my gosh, dude. It's incredible. Yeah, it's, it's just so hard to believe it's coming out of one voice. It's incredible. In a stranger's land 
So powerful. Oh, it's so consistently powerful. Oh my gosh. I have no idea how he was able to keep that pitch so pure as he was just violently moving his body around like that. I can't imagine a world where your breath wouldn't falter a little bit th through that kind of violent movement. That was, that was really crazy. Yeah, that was, that was really just great. I love his vocal style and it just makes it feel like there's all of these different musicians that are just coming together to create one sound, but it's all just him aside from like the choirs, but he really is just a remarkable musician. And just as a showman, he's just so present and takes up the whole stage with his enormously palpable energy and it's just it's very awe-inspiring and and i'm very captivated by it so let's just jump into the analysis of it And something that I really also like too is I notice that a lot of musicians do this as well, where the artist is still talking, but the music, the beginning of the piece is already playing in the background. It already sets the tone of what it is that you've come to expect, even though the artist is still getting ready and shaping himself to the style of the piece. So I really appreciate that just on a on a subconscious level where you and the audience are engaging with what the artist is saying, but internally you can still feel the music and what's about to to happen next and i really appreciate that it's a really good transition i love this instrument i keep forgetting what it's called but it's it's so beautiful Fire is so smooth too, I love it. I know that that's Igor. So, some things that I want to talk about just in this opening sequence is, first, I love Dimash's intensity. I love the fact that he's just behind everybody, but as he's moving forward, his powerfully radiant energy is just progressively pushing against you the closer he gets to you. More close he gets to you, just the more you feel the intensity. It's like having a little sun just coming closer to you and just feeling the impact of that warmth as it progressively gets closer, and I love that. That being said, I really appreciate the way that 
he begins the piece where it's very soft, very breathy, and it, it sets this tone for the more power to come. The, there's this huge contrast from this very shallow, very light, breathy tone from the power that we hear later on. And with and I really love that contrast, that really huge range of dynamic. That being said, just as a personal preference, I don't really like listening to breathy styles of singing. Even if it serves a greater purpose to create that range, I would much prefer a piano or even pianissimo, but still fully vocalized introduction. But that's just a personal preference. I still really appreciate what it is he's doing here, though. And I love the atmosphere that he's creating. And I just really appreciate what he's, how he's performing. I'm not there in person, and I'm sure the intensity would be vehemently more powerful if I was in person. But just through the video itself, it, it's just, you, you can feel the level of energy through the screen. And I love that. That, that takes a lot of skill to do, for sure. To know who I am if I have this trait to begin again. Ooh, and I love that little that little scoop to the note at the end there, at the end of the cadence. That was really nice. And I will say, as a native English speaker, singing in English is excruciatingly difficult. I'd honestly put English as one of the most challenging languages to sing in. And this is coming from a native English speaker. Just in terms of, if you sing something in Italian or German, let's say, you you have typically very pure, open, or closed vowels, but the vowels themselves are pretty pure. Whereas in English, we have tons of diphthongs, where diphthongs are vowels that sound like two vowels. Like if you were to say the word I, you have the open A, A, E, I, I. And to be able to sing like that, especially if it's at the end of a word, if you were to sing the word like, for example, the K would have to come at the very end of the note, but what would you sing it? Would you sing it on like, or would you sing it on like? You would probably use it on the more open, more beautiful sounding on the ah. So like would probably be something closer to what would happen. So even though you can tell that he has an accent and it is coming through in the way that he is singing the English, I don't think it ultimately affects the beauty of what it is that he's doing and the style that he's engaging with it in and ultimately his musical choices as well within the English is a lot of fun and it it's just very textually and audibly pleasing and I really appreciate that. <laughs> It's just such a huge difference from those registers, and oh, it's so sexy. Times I wondered, yeah, I gotta hear that again. Times I wondered, There's something that feels a little off, but I'm having trouble with my felicity presently. I'll find a way to describe it probably it just doesn't feel as supported when he's falling in his lower register again i really appreciate what it is that he's what his vision is and the execution of it, because definitely as a lower vocalist, as a baritone, singing low notes is very difficult. Unless you are a true bass, where your voice just naturally resides in the vocal basement, it's very difficult to perform low notes in a way that's both really well supported, well vocalized, and full. So even though it's not as full, and I'm sure there is support there, it just falls off right at the tail end of it. And to a trained ear, you can hear that, 
but also at the same time, everything that he's doing here, and I've reiterated this in other videos, but I want to reiterate it here. What he's doing is performing. He is sacrificing a little bit of that technique in order to create a much more grand show. He is a showman and a and a remarkable musician after that. And for him to fill up the stage with his energy, with his talent, with his experience and understanding of his own voice, his own limitations and his practice and his ability to keep expanding his horizons and all of these really remarkable attributes. You know, I really, I really just admire the fact that everything he's doing, regardless if it's difficult for him, is for the sake of building this atmosphere and really just structuring this beautiful world that you can exist in with him. And I think that that's just a very rare skill to see in performers. Typically, when you see performers, it's look at how hard I practiced my instrument or look at how I'm capable of both singing and acting or dancing or whatever. But for him, it's look at how good I am at storytelling, at building this world. It's like a father opening a book to read to his son and it's a pop-up book. And the moment the pop-up pages come out, it just completely surrounds you and now you're in the world. His musicianship and his ability to sing is just at an incredibly high level. At the same time, he's sacrificing technique and pure audibly pleasing things in order to really encapsulate the world he's building. I, I can compare it very much to that stringed instrument at the beginning where there is a roughness, there is a coarseness to it, but that coarseness actually contributes to the overall betterment of the world. And I think that that's the really important takeaway from this is the fact that it doesn't need to be perfect in one key area that many people admire, which I, of course, still admire. But it's a beautiful relationship of give and take, which I really appreciate in Dimash's style specifically. And his play, like, he plays with his passaggio so well. And your passaggio is your break in your voice, where for men it would be where your chest voice meets your falsetto. Yeah, just the way that he has this beautiful break in his voice. It it does take a full understanding of your voice and where your passaggio is in order to play with it and to really structure it in your music in a way that not only makes sense, but is beautiful and captivating and adds to the world you're building. So just the fact that he's really legato, really smooth and actually s swinging into his notes, it's not very choppy. It's just very legato. I really appreciate that. <laughs> And just the, uh, uh, at the beginning of his phrases, like, let's listen to that again. Yeah. Uh, I feel. Again, really good stylistic choice. Musically, it's not what I prefer to hear, but again, I understand that it's perfectly fits within the context of the piece and it's there for atmospheric build and it is absolutely a stylistic choice and I really appreciate the vision that goes into that. Yeah, and then you just get this extreme difference with this extremely broad polarizing sound and I love, love that, not just conceptually but in execution as well. Yeah, and the U, he just did U. And typically in classical music with the word U, because U is also a diphthong, O, U, U, you would do U. Keep it as pure as possible and then close it at the tail end. But in this case, he just really grinds into the U. Like, let's listen to that again. Yeah. And this vibrato is just so incredible. I love how smooth and just consistent it is. Like, 
We're gonna listen to that again. That's interesting what he does there. You are cut. Am. So again, stylistic choice, absolutely intentional. And I appreciate the vision for it. It does feel off subconsciously because he didn't finish the whole cadence before breaking it. So to have something so legato and then just have a, a cut and a glottal into am and a glottal is just having a uh, 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 into something to who I uh, and yeah, it feels weird, but I'm not going to say that it's wrong by any means because it's a choice and I really respect it and appreciate it. If I had this to begin again. Oh yeah, and again to where he just goes again and just closes it at the end. That was really good. And that eh, that open eh, epsilon vowel, it was just so pure. And that vibrato just carried it to, to another level. That was so, so great. Lovely chorus. Yeah, this vocal technique is nuts. It's, it reminds me a lot of professional yodelers who are just incredible experts at playing around their passaggio. And he's doing it so well in this very controlled, stylistic way that just really feels like this. Like the images that I'm getting in my head are very Saharan desert, Middle Eastern vibes. And it just really creates this warm and enveloping sound and structure to the piece that even outside of those sensations, you could just really appreciate the vocal technique that he's committing to here. It's really incredible. Ah. Oh. It's... It's... Just amazing. Yeah, and just the it, it It's just a very sharp attack on it, but it was so soft. Like the impact of it was so soft and, and it was just so lovely and delicate. And it just, uh, it, it's just so masterfully executed, especially with the type of incredible range that he has. I, I'm really digging this. We're going to listen to that again. And his placement of vibrato is very, very expertly chosen in this, in this segment. I love this. Yeah. Back into that little growl at the beginning. You hear that very soft T at the end? Feet. Oh, yeah. It was like, I love it when musicians just don't shy away from consonants, but know exactly how to conclude them in a way that isn't jarring, but still fits within the tone of the piece. In a Poor guy is spitzing everywhere. His belt is just, it's so powerful and so just great. Like the moment he did that punch outward, that's more, obviously that's great showmanship because 
it it's more like him just punching the audience in the face of we're about to engage with this really powerful belt but that's more like him getting him going super saiyan it's him charging up subconsciously the the level of energy that's required in order for him to execute what he's about to do and honestly i just love it <laughs> Yeah, and just his body language is so powerful and open. It's it's so commanding and <laughs> and and I love it. And just that who I am. I understand the breaks there a lot more than I did the I am before because now it's m much more of an emphasis on who I am and and it makes a lot more sense within the context of of the sentence and the musical structure so right there I really really dig that it's so powerful and consistent Yeah, I still have no idea how he makes his breath still so smooth and just violently moves his body like that. Even in opera, where you have very sharp, very violent movements like that, typically it's during instrumental sections of the music. Or if you are singing while, say, doing choreographed fighting, for example, typically the fighting is moderately slow so you can sing the piece and then it picks up during the instrumentalists part or whatever mainly because to keep your body as aligned as possible so everything is working as well as it can in order to produce the best possible sound and reach the back of the audience obviously dimash is miked so he doesn't have to worry too much about needing to project to the very back of the theater even though his belt is powerful enough to do that but now he but because he is Mike, he has more liberty to do those movements, to move around, to be more of a showman and develop this world. And while he is pushing himself very hard, you can tell that by how much he's sweating. You can just tell that he's doing such a remarkable job just crafting the world he wants to build for his audience and for himself. It's really just, every time I listen to him, it's just a very mesmerizing experience because I love storytelling and I love music and he's doing such, such a wonderfully consistent job storytelling through his music. And I really connect with him as an artist because of that. Not a lot of artists do it well, let alone as well as he does. So honestly, kudos to you, Dimash. Your, your performances are just, at least from what I've seen so far, have just been jaw-dropping and awe-inspiring. I really appreciate what you're, what you're doing for the musical world. Thank you so much for watching this video with me. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And if you didn't like it, go ahead and leave a dislike and let me know why in the comments. Even though I might not heart or reply to all the comments, I definitely read all of them and take them into consideration as I make new future videos. And thank you all of you who have been so supportive and have been just here with me on my on my musical journey to hear new music and to really appreciate music as a whole. I really appreciate all of you being here and it really does mean a lot to me. So thank you so much for being here. Even if you're here to supply harsh criticism, I just appreciate the fact that you're here to watch the video and form that criticism for yourself and let me know about it. It really does also mean a lot. So thank you. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening and I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.